Hello everyone, it's Benny, and welcome back to the 3D Software Rendering Tutorial Series. Last time, we managed to get solid, filled 2D shapes on screen, but not in 3D just yet. However, we did figure out that the ideal shape for drawing in 3D would be the triangle. So that's going to be our goal for today. We're going to figure out how we can draw a filled triangle. Fortunately, with our 2D shape filling framework, that's going to be very, very easy. Now, just to make things a little bit easier, I went ahead and created this vertex class off screen. It's so simple that I figured it's just not even, I shouldn't even bother showing me creating it. It's just has two floats for X and Y and takes a constructor, getters, etc. So, yeah. Now, right now, we have a scan buffer. And any shape we can represent in our scan buffer, we can fill with the fill shape function. So that simplifies the problem. We don't have to figure out how to draw filled triangles anymore. We just have to figure out how to convert a triangle into a scan buffer. And if we can do that, we can fill it with a fill shape function. And here's sort of how this works. It's really not that hard, but I figured I might as well show you. So you have these points. These points are going to be part of a triangle. You can probably already visualize it in your head, but yeah. Now, here's the thing. Scan buffer has two sides to it. A minimum side and a maximum side. So this line right, right here, all the values in this are going to have to go into the minimum side. And all the values in these two lines are going to have to go in the maximum side. And that's really the only trick to this. The only other trick is really just getting things or drawing a line in a scan buffer. So yeah, let's just go ahead and let's get started. Let's start drawing lines in the scan buffer. I'm going to make this function private for now. It's going to be private void scan convert line. This is going to be our primary function for well, doing exactly what it says on the tent, just scan converting a line. I'm just going to take in some vertex that I'm going to call min y vert, and some vertex I'm going to call max y vert. So it's relying on you specifying specific vertices in here. We're not doing any sorting nonsense, it's relying that they're already sorted somehow. And finally, it's going to take in some int which side. And this is going to be used to determine whether we're drawing in the minimum side of the scan buffer or the maximum side of the scan buffer. And yeah. Okay, and I went ahead and created these variables off screen. It's just taking the x, y values from the ver vertexes and casting them to an end. Just figured, well, not worth showing that on screen. It's simple enough. Anyways, now there's two more variables we're going to want to need from this. We're going to want the y distance, which is how far we're going to need to go on the y-axis, so y end minus y start. And we're going to want the x distance, which is how far we want to go on the x-axis, which is x end minus x start. Now if y distance is less than or equal to zero, we can just return at this point. Because scan buffer, remember, it's all based on the y-coordinate. So if we don't have any y-coordinates to cover, we can't possibly rewriting anything. So, yeah. And that's how that's going to work. Now, how do we draw a line? Just very simple. How do we draw a line? And as I hinted at in the last video, there's actually a very fast and pretty simple algorithm for drawing a line called Briesenham's line algorithm. And Briesenham's line algorithm, again, really nice. Very fast, very simple. Draws any type of line you could possibly want. But... Here's the thing. We actually don't need the full Briesenham's line algorithm because, again, scan buffer only along the y-axis. We only care about lines down the y-axis. So we can actually do a little bit of simplification to the algorithm, which is kind of nice. So ultimately, what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to say 4 int j equals y start. j is less than y end, j plus plus. So as you see, we're just stepping down the y-axis, and every time through here, we're going to say m scan buffer time sub something, well, 
actually is going to be j times 2, plus which side, and this, this is how the which side variable is going to go in. If this is 0, it's going to write to the min part of the scan buffer, because of the way we're organizing the scan buffer, as you see. And if it's 1, well, as you see, it'll be the, the max part. So that's how that works. And yeah, so just every time through here, we're going to write some x value. Now the question is, what x value are we going to write? And here's how we have, here's how we're going to find this out. I'm going to have some float, I'm going to call cur, cur x for current x value, and this is going to be, wait, wrong variable, sorry about that, I'm, I'm getting my variables a little bit mixed up. What I want is an x step. What this is, is how far along the x-axis we're moving for each y-coordinate. So that's kind of like a slope thing. So, for instance, right here. For, if I just show you, say, this line right here. For every time we go down the y-axis, we only have to move a little bit along the x-axis. So, here. I'll just create a new layer to show you. Essentially what we're getting is a over B. How, how far we need to move along B for every step along A. That's what we're going for. And as I'm sure you can guess, that's pretty easy to calculate. What we want is X distance divided by Y distance. Simple as that. That's how far we need to step. And I'm gonna, the way I'm going to use this is with the current X value. That's going to start off equal to float X start. And every time through the loop, current X is going to plus equal X step. So this is how much we need to move along the X axis for every unit along the Y axis. By the time we're at the end, this will have reached the end of the line, which is what we want. So all we have to do now, cast current X to an int right here, and that's all there is to it. This is will scan convert a line. So really we've done the hard part by now. We've got a line drawing thing working. All we have to do now, public void scan convert triangle. Yeah, this is going to take in three vertices. Vertex, I'll say max y vert, sure. Vertex mid y vert, and vertex min y vert. And it's also going to take in some int which side for now. I'm not going to do a whole bunch of fancy logic with this for now. I'm just going to be getting something working in this video. So yeah. And actually, I think I am going to go min y, mid y, max y, vert, just to be a little bit more consistent with my scan convert line. It doesn't particularly matter, but it's just personal preference, really. So now, as I said, there's three lines we need to draw to draw a triangle. First off, there's from this one to this one, so minimum y vert to maximum y vert. So, scan convert line from min y vert to max y vert. And which side this is going to be on depends on, well, which side we specify here. So I'm going to say 0 plus which side. So by default, this should be at the minimum, 0. But if we specify 1 for which side, well, then this should... Actually, I should, more accurately, this should be called handedness at this point. But yeah, it doesn't particularly matter. But anyways, so if handedness is 1, it's going to sort of invert that. That's the goal here. And now there's two more we need. One from min y to mid y, so let's go ahead and do that. Min y to mid y, and this is going to be the opposite, so I'm going to do one minus handedness now. So by default it's one, if handedness is one, this goes to zero. And finally from mid y to max y, because as you can see that's the only combination left. And with that, we can scan convert a triangle. So if I go to main, I'm going to get rid of our this thing right here. I'm going to have a few vertices, so vertex, sure, min y, vert, sure, new vertex. I'll say 100, 100, and I'll just increase y by 200, so yes, that goes 100, 100, this goes 150, and this goes 80, 300, sure. I'm just making up value. So this is mid y, this is max y. And now, what we can do, what we should be able to do, 
first off, range is 100 to 300 now. That's our Y range. We should be able to say target, scan, convert, triangle. Min Y vert. Mid Y vert. Max Y vert. I believe the hand distance... I believe the handedness is zero. I could be wrong about this. But we're about to find out. Hey, look at that! We have a filled triangle. Just like that. That's all there is to it. So with that, folks, we can now draw solid filled triangles in our software renderer. And yeah, so with that, that's all we're going to cover in this video. But... In fairness, this really only works if the vertices are nicely sorted by Y coordinate. We have to specify min Y, mid Y, max Y. How can we possibly get everything working properly, and especially with the handedness, if we're just taking in arbitrary vertices? Find out next time on the 3D Software Rendering Tutorial Series. Thank you, hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, and I'll see you next time.